Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be creating a SaaS product with AI specifically using Autogen. Now you've probably seen a lot of videos that create Snake or Pong and that's great, but I want to change that and let's create uh, an actual product that somebody can use. Well, let's go over the agents and see how it's going to work. Okay. So the first agent is you, the admin, and then we're going to have a planner who is going to plan everything else for the other agents. Then we're going to have the engineer who actually writes the code, the executor, which is really going to take that code and test it. And then the critic who is somebody going to review all the other AI agents, what they did, then give feedback. And then hopefully the other AI agents take that feedback and, you know, do something with it. Now the task for today is we're going to create a flask app for customer surveys. This is a simple application that we're going to be able to run locally. We have a local database within the flask app, and it's going to have a simple homepage where a customer can take a, take a simple question, answer it, and then submit the survey. It'll redirect them to a thank you page. And when it does that, it also saves, uh, the customer survey into the SQL white database. And then lastly, we'll have an admin page that'll have all the results from all of the surveys that were taken to put simply, we want to have a flask app, a database, and then three HTML pages. The goal is to give you the ideas on how to do this, how to create the product. All right. I hope you can take this and do something far better. I want to get, I want to get the ball rolling so that you have an idea how to use the agents and the prompts that I used to create this. Okay. Let's look at the actual code now and see how it was done. All right. So starting off with the open AI configuration, we need just two things for this one. Uh, we need the model that I just chose 3.5 turbo. I have no particular reason why I chose it. I just did because I like messing around, messing around with different models and seeing the results that it gives me. And then you also just need your API key. And now we have our Python file that we're going to actually run for Autogen. So the first thing is we have our imports. We have a config list variable that holds the configuration from open AI. And then we have our LLM config, which the first parameter takes in the open AI configuration. And then we have seed. Now, if you don't know what this is, I'll explain this really quick. Uh, basically by default, I believe the number is 42. And what this is going to do is whenever you run this for the first time, it's going to come over here in your project directory, and it's going to create this cache folder. So if I started out for the first time when seed was 42, it's going to create, uh, under the cache directory, uh, another directory. Uh, with called 42. And what this does, it has a database of the conversations of whenever you ran this for the first time, which means if you run it for the second time, it's going to quickly populate your terminal with the conversations that you've already had with the agents, because it already knows what they are. If you want to have different, uh, conversations with agents for the same project, you need to change the seed number as I've, you can see that I've done here several times testing this out with different models. Um, now if I were to run any of these again, I'm going to get the same conversation that I had the first time with these seed numbers. Okay. Uh, temperature I just set to zero, the request timeout, I set to five minutes that you can change that depending on what you're making. Um, you might need more, you might need less. It depends. Now we get to the agents. The first agent is the user agent, which is you and me, and we're going to be named the admin. And basically we need to make sure that the execution from the planner is approved by us before we move on. Okay. Then we have the engineer, which is essentially the coder. They're going to follow the plan and write Python uh, code to solve the task. All right. And this is just a description of kind of more in depth of how we want them to write the code. And then we had the planner. They are to suggest a plan and revise the plan based on feedback from us and the critic until we approve it. And this basically needs to have clear steps for the engineer, executor, and the critic. The next agent is the executor. And this is basically to execute the code written by the engineer and report the results. And then we have the critic. The critic is just really here to review all of the other agents, what they say in the conversation, review it, and then give feedback. So hopefully they, you know, do something or fix whatever it is they're doing. Like, so if the engineer has written a piece of code, the critic says, oh, you don't have any testing or uh, you're not checking for the specific error. Can you please revise your code and have that checking for me? That's what the, that's what they're there for. And then finally we have a group chat. So we basically just instantiate a group chat object and we have to give them the array of agents that we have. So we know who all is in the group chat talking to each other. Uh, I set the max round, max round at 50. Um, this is just, you know, how many, uh, total interactions there'll be. So you can set this to whatever makes sense for you. Uh, the manager, 
we just basically have a group chat manager object here and this takes in the group chat. So all of the members in the group chat, they're talking to each other and then it takes in the LLM config. And lastly, we have the user proxy initiating the chat with the whole group, okay? And this is where we want them to make the Flask application, uh, the HTML pages, database, and everything, and all the styling, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and run this and see what happens. All right, so we started uh, the planner here. It looks like they have the plan for all of the AI agents. That looks okay. And then the engineer went ahead and started creating the code uh, for their task. So it looks like we have the Flask application here. Uh, here is the SQLite database, um, creating a feedback table. And then we have the routing. So the default routing for the index. And then whenever we submit, it's supposed to give a post. So it looks, looks like it may or may not be okay. We'll see. Um, but then we come down here, we have the three HTML files. We have index HTML file for the main page, the thank you HTML file, and then the admin HTML file. And it does use bootstrap. Uh, it just brings in, looks like maybe the CDN for bootstrap and uses default styling. There's no, there's no real customization here, but it does create a table uh, for hopefully the records. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is all, also it tells you what you need to install. Uh, we want to put this in the requirements text eventually, but what we're going to do is we're going to put all this code into the files that they're supposed to be in and run it and see if it works. All right, so I've copied the code. I ran the server, and now here's the default page. Now, I don't think this is going to work because this is the get request, right? And this is fine. And so it looks like what they do, they just say, if we like the experience, we can just either select yes or no. Now, I think this is not going to work because they didn't have the post request for this URL, right? So if I hit submit here, yeah, there's the method is not allowed for the request URL and that's okay. So now what I need to do is I'm going to get feedback. I'm going to get feedback to the model and say, Hey, this error happened, please fix it and give me the updated code. So let's, I'm going to do that and we'll come back and see if it fixed it. Okay. We're back. I updated the code and this time it allows for a uh, get and post request all in the same function. So now let's try it again. If we, uh, let me select no, cause I didn't like the experience and I'm going to hit submit and I get another error now. I know what this error is. This error has to do with the SQLite database and the way it's using threading. Uh, I'm getting an error saying that there's already one thread open, but I'm trying to execute, uh, I'm trying to submit to the table using another thread. So I know this is the error. I went ahead and I told ChatGPT, I said, or I went to Autogen and said, Hey, this is the error. Uh, can you please fix this so we can don't have to use the same thread to access the database? So I'll be right back. When it gives me the updated code, I'll change it. And then we'll see if that works finally. All right. So we're back. Uh, it gave me updated code and I went ahead and I answered it. I'll show you in a minute after I go through this, cause we're going to see if it worked or not. So I updated the code for the flask Python file. Now it's, I restarted the server and let's see if this works. So I'm going to select an option. Yes. Hopefully this works. Submit. And it works. So finally, after a few iterations and that's okay. Actually, I've had some seeds where. Uh, either the request timeout and I have to restart it or it just would give me so many uh, incorrect um, fixes for the errors that I just had to ha ended up doing it myself. So that, that has happened in, I think, two of the seeds. Um, but uh, for about five of the seeds, it would end up giving me the correct code. Now that we know that it can submit it, the last thing is we need to make sure that the admin page works. So if we go here, go slash admin and it works. Thank goodness. <laughs> Uh, so now it's showing what we, what we can do next is, or in like an, in a separate uh, video is that we can take this and analyze all the feedback. I know here is a very simple, this is a very simple example, right? But if we had multiple pages of multiple different questions and surveys, we could take all that information, have a separate app, separate application or function that takes that data and then analyzes it. And then that would send it back to, uh, the company that hired us to, uh, send out these surveys to people. Okay. Uh, so I had originally said, Hey, you know, we're getting the method not allowed error, uh, here, here, it put the get and post together, which is good. Uh, after that looks like the critic, you know, not me, the critic says, Hey, good job. Uh, but there was actually a threading error. Um, I didn't want it to use the same, the SQLite was again, trying to use the same thread to access it. Didn't want that. So it came, uh, gave me updates on all the code. So I went in, I went in and I updated the code 
And then now um, it kind of explains it. I said, good job. Now I can say, good job, this works. Okay, now as far as going through and creating a simple SaaS product, and I know this is very simple. I'm not trying to create something that I'm gonna make a lot of money on, but this is the idea on how to generate it and how to go through using the autonomous agents, giving them the roles, and then testing the application. You know, you can give feedback. I know we had an executor agent do that, but uh, us, we, I'd like to do that myself as well because I want to test it because the executor uh, before has sometimes said, oh, this works, and then I test it and it didn't quite work. So I like testing it myself anyways. I think it's good to do. But in the end, we've created a simple SaaS product using Autogen. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please share uh, your comments down below. Let me know if you've optimized this more. Maybe you got better results. Maybe you did more with the product. You know, I would love to hear from you and see what you guys have done. Okay, and if you have any issues, leave them in the comments below. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time.